So this is keypad poly. And what it is, uh, is a, a patch that uses a single keyboard module to achieve a sort of polyphony. And I have to begin with an apology because for a year and a half, people have been asking the keyboard module, can it do polyphonic stuff? And I kept saying, well, no, it's monophonic. And that's still technically true. Um, but I have figured out a way to sort of approximate polyphony. And that uses some switching. And I'll go into that in detail in just a second. I'm going to talk about this patch. The six voice patch. If I kill the reverb, we can hear the voices start to cut each other off. Uses a simple attack decay envelope. See the lower voices disappear as I move up the keyboard. Uh, but reverb is a great disguiser of voice stealing. Um, which is why it's great to have on a polysynth and why I put it in this patch. Uh, and this is a, a pretty simple patch. It uses um, some FMing of triangle waves to create variations in the sound so you can increase the FM amount. Um, and then because I found the voices kind of piled up when I listened to them, I put in a, a spread control so you can spread the voices across the stereo field so that they feel more distinct. Um, like I said, it uses a simple attack decay uh, envelope and there's some pulse width or duty cycle modulation stuff that again just adds a little bit of flavor to the sound. But I think the the really interesting part here is okay, how do you do this? And you save the patch because in order in order to show what's happening here, I'm going to have to uh, mess it up a little bit. Because what we have here is a, a 40 note keypad or, or keyboard module that I have tuned to A minor. On the second page, there's a transpose. So you could transpose it into another minor key. If you wanted to use a major key or some other key, you could, you know, reconfigure the, the notes um, to whatever you wanted to use as well. So, now it's in D, even though the notes show uh, the A minor scale still. Um, so how does this work? What it really is, I'll give you a hint. One, it doesn't pay any attention to gates. And that's why I keep talking about this attack decay envelope because all of the notes will use it in the exact same way. Um, so I can hold down on a note that doesn't really do anything different than if I just tap on a note. Uh, and that's because instead of using the gate output, what happens here um, let me reduce the number of notes so that we can see the output of the module. So here we have the note output. And this goes to an out switch. And connected to the output of each of these out switches is a sample and hold module. So what happens is that, that um, the notes are held by these sample and hold modules. 
So the, the keyboard output is monophonic. It only outputs one note at a time, but each of these sample and hold modules is holding on to that note until the next time the voice is cycled to. Uh, you go back to the front page. Then the trigger output is doing a couple of things. First, I tried to use this with uh, the, the actual keyboard trigger and I'm when I wrote about this on Facebook I, I mentioned using the keyboard trigger in this way um, but I found that the trigger output was just too slow the the trigger uh, took too long to return to zero so instead of using the trigger output I've sent the trigger output to the input of an uh, attack hold decay envelope where I've set the hold stage to a very small increment um, and then the output of this is connected to the negative input of a comparator. Now why I do that is so the comparator goes high each time this envelope ends and the, the envelope ends very quickly um, so it's mostly high, we see it high now, and that moves this sequencer along. And the sequencer controls uh, the out switches. So one goes <coughs> here to the sample and holds, uh, and that's also, don't want to do that, that's also where our transpose value goes in if we want to change the key. Uh, the note output of the keyboard is added here and it's distributed to the sample and holds. The other output of the sequencer goes to this other out switch and its source is our attack hold decay envelope, which is basically just creating a very, very short burst. Um, and that burst goes two places. One is it goes to the sample and holds to lock the notes into place, and the other uh, is to these uh, attack decay envelopes, which are set to immediate release off. So what that means is when they're triggered, they'll go through their whole cycle um, rather than than cutting off as soon as the, the gate or trigger source ends. And those go into VCAs uh, to control the output of the oscillators whose pitches are determined by the sample and holds. Uh, and then, you know, there's the other stuff that I did. This is the duty cycle modulation going on. And this is a VCA for the uh, FM amount. Um, that's the LFO for the, the duty cycle modulation. Here's the panners that I used. And then uh, goes into a reverb light and goes back and exits through our output module, um, which I put on the second page so that the, the gain control was convenient. Um, and I apologize, I have a sore throat. I'm not speaking very loudly. I hope you can hear me. I'm going to uh, publish the... I, I've already written about this on Facebook. I sort of tucked it into a comment uh, thread a few days ago. And I have to say, you know, I, the theory was sound, but I'd never actually tried it out. So this is the result of me trying it out. And again, in that comment... I suggest using the trigger output. And the only difference between what I wrote there and what I've done here is that I've used this uh, attack hold decay envelope again because the trigger output was just too slow to keep up with this. So the attack hold decay moves very quickly. I'm going to move the keyboard module so that we can watch it, right? This is only 
2.8 milliseconds. I could probably go shorter, but this seems perfectly fine for capturing chords, um, which surprised me, to be perfectly honest with you. I thought it would not sound nearly as fluid as this. I thought there'd be dropped notes. It seems to capture most things. Every now and then you might hear something uh, not get caught. Um, but it seems to, to do pretty well. The, the thing that makes this not quite polyphonic again is that, you know, the, the gate doesn't matter at all, right? Each note will play for as long as the last note um, because they're determined by those attack decay envelopes and not, and those attack decay envelopes are triggered. They have nothing to do with the gate. Um, but it's, you know, it's a fun... Uh, you know, polysynth, I think. It sounds pretty good to me. Um, if you were traveling or something like that and just wanted to, to jam around on something, I think it's, it's perfectly okay. Or, you know, I mean... Uh, and you could do you know, other things with, with the voices than what I've done. I like, you know, I didn't want to go the filter route um, just because that would require more envelopes and, and everything. Uh, so I decided to go with, with a pretty basic FM style synth. Um, but you could add filters instead of going the FM route. It'd probably be pretty similar in CPU cost. So this is six voices and it has, you know, panning and FM and uh, reverb light um, and all of that. And I thought, okay, well, what's the most I could get out of this? And that's when I put in keypad polyist. Um, and what this is, is a super basic synth. All it is are oscillators and VCAs. And I kept the reverb light because... I'm not a monster. Um, so... Has the same controls, although much fewer of them. If we turn up the decay, though, we can hear... Only when I hit that last note should this first note be stolen away. And I changed the basic waveform to a sawtooth uh, because I found with the triangles without any FM or anything like that it was a little bit hard to distinguish the individual notes. But this works on the same basic uh, principle, just expand it, you know, so you have an 11 step sequencer um, and you have an 11 output out switch and you have an 11, another 11 output out switch and you have 11 sample and holds and 11 uh, attack decay envelopes. Um, and I think you could probably get 12 voices, maybe 13. 13 might be pushing it if you took out the uh, reverb light. I, again, I think reverb really helps the patch sound a little bit more cohesive. Um, you know, they're also less CPU intensive methods of producing sound. So you could probably get like, you might be able to max out, out switches only have 16 outputs natively. You can link them together in some ways, but but if you're just using them with the, the maximum uh, number of outputs available, um, then they have 16 channels. And you might be able to do pinged filters for 16 voices. I haven't checked that out, um, but it, it's definitely a possibility. Uh, 
because pinged filters only require one, um, you know, noise or, or oscillator module, and then, you know, it's it's a bunch of filters, but, you know, I, you could probably do 16 filters if you really wanted to, to rig everything up. Now, I only have 40 keys available. I sort of struggle to come up with anything useful to play across 11 voices um, in this format, especially, uh, you know, when gates don't matter. So if this was an 11 voice synth, I might hold down a, a chord on the bottom row and play over top of it um, or do a rhythm on the, the bottom row and, and, you know, play some, some pads over top. Uh, Again, because this doesn't use the gate outputs, all the voices will, will last the same amount of time. So that's, you know, uh, less of a, a possibility than it might otherwise be. Um, but, you know, I mean, just as sort of an experiment. Eleven voices. Uh, from the keypad. And the only sort of glitchy thing is that I've really noticed is sometimes when you release uh, the keyboard module, uh, you'll get a double trigger. There will be a trigger on release. But otherwise it, it works shockingly well. And so those are the, the keypad uh, uh, patches. This one's called P Keypad Poly 3 because I already did some keypad polys where uh, I used rows of keyboard modules to kind of mimic polyphony. But this is, you know, those had actual gate control, which is nice. It's really great for expression, but... There is something about just playing a chord. So that's the patch. That's how it's done. Uh, I'll post, you know, the, the recipe on tips and tricks uh, when I post this patch. And uh, yeah, you know, have fun with that.